We have quite a show for you today. We're talking coaching changes. There's a lot of them, and they matter. Is it a defensive coach? I don't like it. Is it an offensive coach? I probably like it. We'll take a look a lot deeper than that, though, on all the situations, plus some news to catch up on. Like the video, subscribe, tell your friends. Enjoy the ride. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's birthday time. Whoa. <laughs> you didn't know if you are going to do it, did I you? I did it, but I did. Happy birthday, Mike. It's my birthday time. I'm sure with the sheer number of people that listen to this great podcast, it is also someone else's birthday time, and I would like to wish them a happy birthday. Yes. Ooh. Also that, you. Every day is kind of birthday time for somebody, isn't it? What is but it not if to, you're in I a mean, room with like, oh, yeah, just 20 people, someone's, it's just some, some stupid math trick. That's It's somebody's birthday? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what the, the hell the yeah, saying is. You probably goes. need to figure the whole thing out. But uh, <laughs> happy birthday, Mike. Thank you. May this year, my, my wish for you is that this year, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whoever your quarterback is, they don't let you down on Monday Night Football. Oh, uh, that's a nice thing to say. Right? Yeah. Ho I mean, they can't be it worse can't, than can't last keep, year. It can't keep happening, can it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a coaching changes episode. We've been talking about this one. We're going to walk through all the different changes. <laughs> yeah, There's no, a this lot. Is, the, yeah, it's literally a quarter of the league has changed their coaches. And we you know, we have this show every year. Every year it is valuable. And I think this one is this one's a big deal. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of moving parts, leaders on these teams. And some of the hires, I think, are already starting to dictate personnel moves and changes that are being made with the rosters. When you get new coaches, loyalties are gone from previous coaching staffs, and some of that stuff comes through as well. A uh, couple of reminders here at the top of the show before we get into the quick question and some news and the coaching carousel. Um, we're on YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. You can check out the YouTube channel, and recently we posted a Wheel of Shame compilation. So, we didn't know how this was going to go this year. It's the, a good time. The first ever year of the Wheel of Shame, including hashtag fish face. Mm. And the video is very fun to, to blitz through and see all the different results because I forgot how bad some of them yeah, are. Yeah, you, you see the, the the level of the game progressively <laughs> getting, getting meaner. Getting worse. We were just figuring out <laughs> where the lines were. Like, and hold on, hold on. You did this to me? That's right. Well, <laughs> you can't see now. <laughs> Twitter at the FF Ballers. If you want to follow us over there, Jason is at Jason FFL. Mike is at FF Hitman. You can follow me at Andy Holloway. And what else? The Ultimate Draft Kit. You got a week left. If you order it before March 10th, you'll get a chance to win a Listener League spot. You also get uh, about $15 in gift cards. You'll get it at the lowest possible price. If you're new to the show, or you joined us sometime after draft season last year, the Ultimate Draft Kit is a living, breathing, uh, jam-packed resource for draft day. All of our projections, our rankings, starts, or not starts, uh, sleepers, breakouts, busts, values, a ton of tools, including on the UDA, in the UDK Plus, there's the draft analyzer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Over 100 video breakdowns of, of players, profiles, uh, you know, giving you more context to players. It's it's a valuable tool. It's really what we are about in this time of year. And so you're incentivized to pre-order it by getting it at the lowest possible price. You'll get a free digital copy of the book as well and a bunch of perks that are worth some money. So you can check that out at ultimatedraftkit.com. News and notes from around the league. All right. Cliff Kingsbury, Steve Keim. They've, Hooray. They've both agreed to a new contract. What? Well, and, it, what's and it, like one year, one year extension? Much rejoicing in Arizona. No, they're, they're, uh, what year is it? It's 2022? Yeah, they're under contract until 2027. Oh, my gosh. Due what? To, due to the law of extrapolation, gentlemen. 
Um, <sighs> five wins, eight wins, 11 wins. Then it'll I, be 14, 17, 20, 23. I get it. All right. Like, it's – that's what – part part of what it was annoying about of uh, the success is that it it's ramped up, but it doesn't feel – like the team has had greater success each year because at the end of every year there's always a, a collapse, a monster collapse where the team, the that that team, uh, the eleven win team, is that what we the the Cardinals were? Yes, yes. Uh, it, they were seven and zero, and they finished with eleven wins. Like that's hey, a, we got four more. Well, look, it, it, that's that's a brutal back half for a team that at that point you're the Super Bowl favorites. And so, but I told him, I get it. I get that Cliff Kingsbury came in and took this team, which was a, like a three-win team or something at the time, and got them into the playoffs with the help of, of Kyler Murray. General manager Steve Kime has lit first-round draft picks on fire almost every single year since he has been the general manager of the Arizona Cardinals. That one I do not understand. Uh, unless we're going to take away that part of his job, he's to his credit, he has done extremely well finding veterans to bring into the team, making cool trades like shipping off a gigantic running back contract for DeAndre Hopkins. But when it comes to the actual draft, the Cardinals have not made their team better when they should have with all of these top 10 picks that they've had. It was easy to select Kyler Murray right. when you have the first pick in the draft. You had the first pick in the draft for a reason. Your roster right. wasn't very good. So clearly the owner of the Cardinals moved beyond his emotions quicker than either of you two gentlemen. And uh, look, if they were 6-6 six and six and they win their final five games, everybody's begging for this, for both of them. Sure. And the record's the same. So it is a lot of momentum. It's the bad playoff matchup. I'm not saying that I agree with the extension to this degree. Some people have speculated that some of Kyler's words in his letter alluding to stability of the franchise and having the same exact agent as Cliff Kingsbury, there could have been a connection there. Uh, the timing is obviously interesting with Kyler begging for an extension and then these fundamental other pieces, getting one. I don't know if Kyler's going to get an extension. Steve Kine came out and said they will fifth-year option him, obviously. So we'll see what happens. Amari Cooper, when they asked the uh, Cowboys executive vice president, Stephen Jones, about Amari Cooper, he says it's too early for me to address that regarding the 2022 roster. Ooh, he, yeah. He's owed a $20 million base salary. It becomes guaranteed in 17 days. Yeah, that is rough. Um, the $20 million salary becomes a $6 million dead cap hit if they were to cut him. Now, Jerry doesn't mind spending money, and I don't think anybody thinks that their team gets better. Even if you've got, you know, you're excited for CeeDee Lamb, and maybe CeeDee Lamb gets better for fantasy purposes, the Cowboys don't get better by cutting Amari Cooper. But I would be currently, shocked if they did it. Yeah, I I would too. The way I would, that they run this this team. I would I would too. I don't think that it helps their roster. I think that Amari Cooper is a, a very good wide receiver for their team. They are currently, I think, somewhere in the neighborhood of about twenty million dollars over the cap. So they do have to make some moves. Um, but just hearing the, like, I I would imagine that the normal stance from the GM, like, oh, is. <laughs> Is this hundred million dollar player who you love and has been a a, a big part of the team? Is he going to be back? Oh, absolutely. It's like, yeah, uh, no, don't don't talk to me about that. That was shocking to to read. Uh, Dalton Schultz, Cedric Wilson, Michael Gallup, all free agents. So you know you could bring Gallup back, I guess. If you I mean whenever he's healthy, right? I know. So uh, Dak Prescott underwent cleanup surgery on his left non throwing shoulder. Okay, it's a preemptive okay. strike. He didn't yeah. need the surgery, but they did that in advance of future you gotta, injury. You got to clean it. Yeah. Yeah. The other shoulder was Jimmy Garoppolo went under the knife uh, to fix that uh, sh shoulder injury. They're still saying it's likely he gets traded, but that'll complicate it, right? Nobody's right. really wanting to trade for a guy that is not able to play football at the moment. Fantasy managers, 
maybe cover your ears, but Broncos general manager George Patton spoke about Melvin Gordon, said he's had good discussions with him, would love to bring him back. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. It I, makes it makes complete sense for the Broncos. Yeah, I think it's a good move for the Broncos to do it. Melvin had a lot of juice left. It, it uh, gives you a nice one-two punch with Javante, but – Melvin can be more fantasy relevant somewhere else by himself, and then Javante can be a fantasy superstar by himself. I was happy when you read the full uh, discussion, uh, and not just this quote. He did mention that he has full confidence in Javante that he could have a full workload. So, uh, you know, it's just a matter of will the money work for Melvin Gordon, but it was nice to hear him yeah, say. he said they made each other better, but he could handle whatever. He could handle whatever. He could do a full workload, and that's give it to him. Devontae Booker, Kyle Rudolph, both cut by the Giants, creating some cap space. It's looking more likely that the Giants are going to uh, potentially just take a machete to this roster. Yeah. I mean, Saquon Barkley, their GM said he's open to anything. Yeah, they they probably should be open to anything. Yeah, a lot of money committed to players that didn't deliver a lot on the field, to be honest. Josh McDaniels said Derek Carr will absolutely be the starting quarterback in week one. No more talks about the extension yet. And then Matt Ryan anticipated to return, according to head coach Arthur Smith. Yeah, co contract-wise, Matt Ryan, we, we kind of knew he was going to be playing this year for sure after his last restructure, and then they'll look for the future, uh, possibly in the draft this year, but it'll be Matt Ryan starting. Okay. You guys want to get into the coaching changes? Boy, do I! <laughs> Coaching Carousel. Well, you said it. Five new head coaches in 2027 and 2021. Ooh. Nine new head coaches in 2022. If these trends continue. <laughs> yes. Yes. 11 next year. Uh, here is my reminder of a reminder of a reminder because we've said this before. Much like free agent players moving teams, and there's it's nice to paint a picture, there's a reason these teams changed coaches. And it wasn't just the coach, right? They, a lot of the times the coach takes the fall for a myriad of things, bad player performances, injuries, a lot of different things. So when you look back at the seven head coaching changes that happened last, last year, I want to read them to you. Because there's there was a rose colored glasses view for each of these that you could make, right? For fantasy. Um but it didn't work out for fantasy. That's the headline here. Arthur Smith in Atlanta, not good, really, for fantasy purposes. Uh Dan Campbell in Detroit, you can call that neutral to bad for fantasy purposes. It was great for testosterone levels, though. Correct. Uh Urban and Meyer Star and Starbucks sales. Oh yeah, yeah. No. Just for the local Detroit just, area. Yeah, no, no, just what for was, the local Detroit. How much did he say he was? He was grabbing two forty ounce. I mean, he, uh, he was doing like big with extra espresso shots in yeah. there. Uh, Urban Meyer in Jacksonville. That it went really well. <laughs> uh, Brandon Staley in Los Angeles was the singular good story um, because it meant good things. It's like Justin Herbert made a step forward, and Mike Williams had a great year, and. And Austin Eckler was a dominant fantasy force. So, Brandon Staley, thank you for showing us that a new head coach can make a difference. Yeah, and uh, like extra opportunities going forward on fourth down and not just giving up the ball. Robert Sala in New York, not good for fantasy, not laying it all at his feet, just making the point. New head coach, not a great fantasy producing team. Nick Sirianni in Philadelphia, I will call that neutral at best, but really not good. I mean, there weren't fantasy options on that roster that you could count on outside of Jalen Hurts no the offense wasn't necessarily great I, I think he got off to a strong start he would be number two in like coaching hires last year as far as NFL outlook I think he exceeded the expectation that I had for him but for fantasy purposes not so much and then uh one year wonder David Coley Ugh, the fall guy didn't have a chance so you know Transitions, you got nine new transitions. You saw the hit rate last year. It wasn't great. That's not to say more can't work out this year. Yeah, but these are bad teams. I, like Part of the hit rate is one of those guys we talked about, he's already gone. Right, right. <laughs> and uh, that's not the first time that's happened. I mean, uh, with the two, car, car, two of those guys. Yeah. I forgot. Ah, Coley. 
Just You're talking so, about Urban Meyer? Yeah, that was that, like that, I'm not laughing at Coley. I'm laughing at Urban Meyer for being a buffoon. Coley was they did him dirty there. Yeah. Well he did his he did his best. He did. That was the point. And yeah. He, his best wasn't good enough, Mike. I guess. All right, let's start with the Chicago Bears. Brand new head coach, brand new offensive coordinator. Last year we know the story, twenty seventh in points per game, thirtieth in passing yards, twenty ninth in passing touchdowns. The wheels fell off for Matt Nagy. Welcome in. The former defensive coordinator for the Indianapolis Colts, Matt Eberflus, and offensive coordinator Luke Getze replacing Bill Lazor. That's the big one. Like Eberflus, defensive guy, you know that's that it is what it is. Like so, the, the bigger questions are over for our our man Luke. Uh, what what do we think he's going to do for the? The growth for Justin Fields, and you, which is everything. Yeah, yes, that that, and they he was he's coming from the Green Bay area, Green Bay quarterback coach for the past couple of years. Uh, so getting to work with one of the greatest of all time, did he pick up enough uh, tools from that situation that he can propel Justin Fields forward to be the quarterback that they hope and believe he can become? This one scares me. This one, I okay. I I. You know, I, I've been wrong on my outlook on, on a coach before, but this to me um, was he was a quarterback coach with a Hall of Fame quarterback, right? He's obviously not trying to make Aaron Rodgers learn how to play and become a better quarterback. He's, you know, probably doing as much what Aaron Rodgers is telling him to do. And, and then their offensive coordinator goes away and gets a head coaching job and instead of taking over that offensive coordinator job, um, he he moves to a new job. This is a guy who hasn't called plays before, um, and so it's and now he's going to be for a defensive head coach. So I'm I was disappointed because I like Justin Fields. I hope he overcomes, but I don't think he was set up like properly with the coaching staff to really confidently groom him forward. Um, the way that I, I think Jacksonville did a much better job um, focusing on their rookie quarterback and saying, what do we need to do to uh, to put a team around him that has a history of, of success? And and maybe Luke gets Getsy is uh, better than I'm expecting. Well, now, big brain. Did, does Luke have the inside track that Rodgers is going to be gone and Jordan Love's going to be the quarterback? And he's like, I want no part of that. Get me out of here. I'm going to go coach Justin Fields. Possibly. Po I mean, that could be the reason he he mm. left the the Packers. But it, it it's weird to me to, to see, like, he changed teams to take the role that was available for him on his current team. So, yeah, maybe if Aaron Rodgers was um, known to be leaving, then heck yeah, I'd bail. Well, who's calling plays in Green Bay, though? It's LaFleur. So yeah, this so is that, his this opportunity, is opportunity to call yeah. plays, but I, I hate when a first-time play caller is an offensive coordinator. Well, when you whenever you have an offensive coordinator getting promoted, or I mean a quarterback coach or offensive coordinator getting promoted on the basis of a Hall of Fame quarterback's performance, Adam Gay starts to come to mind, and you get a little – you take yeah. a step back. They're not going to be able to help Justin Fields with a first-round draft pick, so they ain't getting a first-round wideout or a first-round – offensive linemen to help that struggling offensive line. So, you know, you're still in a division that presumably will bring Aaron Rodgers back. The Packers are going to be competitive. The Vikings are going to be competitive. And so the 6-11 and 11 Bears have a lot of work to do. And it's all going to be on the back of Justin Fields. You know, the question here is if you're taking a bet on Justin Fields with a new coaching staff in 2022, you know, as of March – is this a guy that can be top 12 to you? Can 100%. He can be. Uh, will he? That's a much more difficult question. I mean, I I, I, I I, think he's a fringe top 12 guy. I don't have him there. He is a mobile quarterback, so he's obviously – I think this is one of those situations where he could be not the best, not the best for the NFL, but still be good for fantasy, like Jalen Hurts last year. Jalen Hurts was not phenomenal – uh, for the NFL, I know they made the playoffs, but it was you know a terrible division. Um, I still think that he will produce enough to be fantasy relevant. I would bet against him. Four of his final five games, he was at least the quarterback ten. 
Yeah, exactly. Or he's better. A, he's, a, he's a mobile guy, but I would bet against him taking the career leap towards being a franchise guy now. For what it's worth, defensive head coaching hires. So Iberflus was the defensive coordinator in Indianapolis. Over the last four years, it has not been a good run. Vic Fangio fired. Brian Flores fired. Ja Rule, Matt Ja Rule. He's on thin ice in Carolina. Joe, Joe Judge. <laughs> Judgment Day came for Joe Judge. Uh, Ron Rivera, okay, one good, one bad. Uh, nice start for Brandon Staley. Again, Brandon Staley's job here is to stand out from the crowd, and so far so good. Robert Sala, bad start. I mean, to be fair, most coaching hires it's a bad start. fail miserably. Ah, and, and just in general. Yes. That is true. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the Broncos, let's move on. New head coach, new offensive coordinator, Nathaniel Hackett. Coming over from Green Bay, their former offensive coordinator, and then uh, Justin Outen replacing Pat Shermer as the offensive coordinator as well. The The Broncos struggled offensively last year, 25th in passing touchdowns, 23rd in passing points per game. Obviously, they are flipping from Vic Fangio to an offensive mind and Nathaniel Hackett. You know, it's the same conversation about being connected to a Hall of Fame quarterback and how well that works. So. Can Denver function? Can he fix Denver's offense? And is it just going to come down to really one level above him fixing the quarterback position? Yeah, I mean, that, the truth is, it it always comes down to the quarterback. Um, I know that you had Nathaniel Hackett with one great year with Blake Bortles, so you have you have an example of having a bad quarterback having a great year. But you know, Nathaniel Hackett has been a long time offensive coordinator in the league, and he hasn't really been phenomenal outside of that single year or when he's got the Hall of Fame quarterback. I do like Nathaniel Hackett. I think this was a good hire to bring in an offensive guy. Um, it is pretty crazy how depleted the offensive coaching staff. They've all been pilfered from uh, Green Bay, so maybe to Mike's point, maybe they do know something or they're afraid of something there. Um, they get promotions. I mean, that's yeah. what it is. It, when a team is good, you lose your coaching staff. Yeah, the, the – the reality is Nathaniel Hackett won't hack it if they don't get a quarterback. Oh, they won't. Oh. I mean, if they don't. Kyle, get a what was what was the uh, the over under? I know we had it set of who's going to make the joke first, and Jason, you took it, and I'm proud of it. <laughs> I am. I I will lean in. At, I, I had you at minus one ten. I don't think that there was anybody who really looked at this offense last year and said, "Man, a change of Vic Fangio is going to fix it." Or, like, you need another mind to come in and help us figure out which wide receiver can perform or, or running back. It is what you said at the top. It's going to come down to what quarterback they put in place there. And maybe Nathaniel Hackett, being of the offensive side of the ball, is able to bring that along faster than we'd expect if it's a younger quarterback, if it's somebody that, you know, you want to recreate the Green Bay system and be efficient in this offense. And, um, I think we need more pieces of the puzzle to make projections on this. I at least like that the management for the Broncos like are not hiding behind the like, well, you know, we had some good things from Bridgewater. It's no everything they're putting out publicly is we know we have to fix the quarterback position. We are going to do anything possible that we can to fix the quarterback position. Because the the Denver Broncos are a good starting quarterback away from competing in that division and possibly making a playoff run. So I don't, that just at least gives me some confidence that they – whatever whatever stone they can turn over to try and f find a quarterback, they're at least going to go after it. Meanwhile, like the, the Panthers, I don't know that they can. With everything that they've done in the, in the last couple of years, uh, kind of removing some of the options that they could take – uh, to fill the quarterback void, I, I think that the Broncos can really make a move. Yeah, I mean, the, the, there was a lot of speculation, including former GMs of, 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 the, of the Packers, who said that you'd need to pay attention, that if Hackett goes to Denver, there might be some smoke there to Aaron Rodgers. So um, if he goes, everybody's great. If he doesn't, it's going to be more of the same as last year. Houston Texans have a new head coach and a new offensive coordinator. But they're familiar names, both of them. Lovey Smith, yeah. the new head coach replacing David Coley. You probably remember Lovey Smith the most from the long run with the Bears as a successful head coach in yes. Chicago from 2004 to 2012. And then Pep Hamilton, who I, I really like Pep Hamilton. 
Uh, and I like his name. I, I like the connection here between Pep and the progression for Davis Mills. Uh, I think Hamilton is especially uh, talented when it comes to developing quarterbacks and bringing them along. And I, I liked what I saw from, from Davis Mills, General Mills himself in year one. So I can't, you know, what do you get here? You get quarterback development on the offensive side of the ball and you get stability and established uh, name with Lovey Smith as the head coach. So I think these are both good hires. I mean, this was an atrocious offense last year. They're still finding their way through this Watson situation and what picks they're going to get, um, which they need desperately because they don't have a lot of picks. So what was your take on these hires, Jason? I, I, I think that, I'm glad they hired Lovey Smith. He deserved it. He was, I mean, the defense played fan fantastically given their roster last year. Um, Pep Hamilton, he was part of the development of Andrew Luck. So that's kind of the pro like, oh, you know, he, he he's shown that he's been there for a young quarterback and, and brought about success. That's great. That's also Andrew Luck. Like he was the 101 in the NFL draft. They, he was expected to be great. Um, you know, I, I, I'm fine with these hires. It's really a matter of talent, and Davis Mills. I don't know. Is he the? I'm gonna. Is where where? Is he the third best like quarterback from last year's draft? Is he the best? No, I think I think he's up there. Yeah, and and I want to give Pep Hamilton more credit than that. He was also Justin Herbert's quarterback coach last year, so he's he Justin Herbert made huge strides as a as a young quarterback as well. So you know, chicken or egg, always in the NFL. Um, Houston has an NFL leading $35 million in dead cap for 2022 for players that aren't on the roster. So oh, there's a lot that the, like, that the team needs to figure out. And they need they need oh better man. personnel. They just do. Billy O'Brien. He <laughs> Thank you for your services. Still haunting. Yeah, that he team. is. <laughs> yeah, what he did was play fantasy GM. And then, you know, it's not like he quit. So he didn't walk away from it, but they fire him, and then they're left with all the yeah sewage. Look, we've we've all taken well, not all, but we've we've taken over orphan dynasty teams before, and you're like, how in the heck am I? Gonna, yeah, how do I fix this disaster? There's personnel problems. It's a tough division, so we'll move on. Jacksonville, new head coach, new offensive coordinator, Doug Peterson, after taking a year off. Uh, I have it in here from Kyle. Sat on his butt in 2021. Do you have? Do you have that? The proof for that? He's nodding. Okay. Yeah, I mean, extensive photos. It could have been gardening. Well, that could be hard work. Yeah, on butt gardening. All right. He's just scooting around. Um, Press Taylor, the new offensive coordinator, younger brother of Zach Taylor, and uh, fun fact. He's credited with the Philly special play call. Oh. So this is someone that's obviously worked with Doug Peterson. He was a longtime uh, assistant quarterback coach with the Eagles when Doug Peterson was there. So I like the familiarity. I like the fact that this is, you know, part of a coaching staff that won a Super Bowl, that developed Carson Wentz. Um, and, and now, you know, I this is this is the example here of trying to really bring a team around uh, your you know hopeful franchise quarterback rookie uh, I don't know that I saw enough on the field to like be you know thoroughly in on Trevor Lawrence's future but this staff gives me a lot of uh hope so you weren't persuaded by the uh lowest points per game 14.9 per game last year oh, oh. from rookie Trevor Lawrence. I was persuaded, but the wrong direction. Okay. The 32nd ranked in passing he was, touchdowns. He was so stinking bad. I mean, and you and it was like you 2% watched, touchdown rate. You watched the <laughs> film and you just had some throws that were they were so bad you don't call them inaccurate. You think he made a bad decision. But I question was the decision like, oh, wait, where was he throwing? Or was it just a super inaccurate pass? That being said, he had a lot of passing yardage for a rookie. Um, you know, and, and obviously he has the talent, the raw skills to do it. But not every first round, first selected quarterback overall pans out. If there's a job of a head coach with a rookie quarterback, it's to proverbially equip that 
player to run out on the field. And it seemed like Trevor Lawrence ran out on the field without any tools in the tool belt a lot last year. And that meant no confidence. That's what I saw. I saw a player that was running out there who didn't really know what to do. Um, and it definitely makes us wonder what the future is going to be for Trevor Lawrence. But and they don't have the receiving core around them now, but I do think that they have the ammunition. I expect them. I, I would, I think I would be more surprised if they don't trade out of the one on one, unless they just can't to uh, amass some more weapons. Uh, if they do, they could grab the first wide receiver off the board a little bit later in the draft. Um, they've obviously got Travis Etienne coming back, so I think there could be a good core going in. And Doug Peterson, um, yeah, I'm so I'm I'm in on this hire. Four years in, four and a half in Philadelphia. I guess it would be five years. They he he play, he coached all of 2020. Seven and nine, then 13 and three, won the Super Bowl. Nine and seven, nine and seven, four, 11 and one. Hmm. So you know, we'll we'll see. I think there are people on both sides of the Doug Peterson. More seems like the Philly fans felt like he was just the scapegoat for a lot of what happened. But the Raiders, new head coach, new offensive coordinator, Josh McDaniels. Let's here do we, it again. Here we go. He was the Denver head coach, which amazingly was all the way back in 2009, 2010. That feels like, I, I can't believe, what, that's 12 years ago? That's, yeah. a, that's incredible. He was the Colts head coach um, in 2000. He was, yes. Yeah. What year was that? For about 30 minutes? Yeah. And then he pulled back out of the of the accepted offer? That's crazy. Yeah. So he it wasn't right for him, Jason. He was waiting for the Raiders. Apparently. Job. He's wait, waiting for the Raiders job. Mick Lombardi replacing Greg Olson as the offensive coordinator. So do we still does does he still have the shine that he used to have, Josh McDaniels? Because if there was ever a player that or a coach that you know, you're with the GOAT for the majority of your career, however, it was a nice first season uh for Jones in in New England. Yeah, the, as far as the shine, I mean, it was basically every off season you had the uh, well, Josh McDaniels is connected to this job, and this is the one where McDaniels finally decides to go in on it. Um, the Raiders are they're a very strange team. Um, at, at least publicly, McDaniels is kind of saying like Derek Carr is our guy. Like there was the rumor mill what, a week ago or whatever about Derek Carr is going to have get a new contract out there. But you have a ton of holes on this offense, especially at the wide receiver position, aside from Hunter Renfro, who looks like a great long-term option for the team. It will it, – it, McDaniels is up against it, and for fantasy football, it's I – don't, I don't know that a lot is changing here. For I, the Raiders. I don't know that McDaniels is going to elevate anybody else in this offense. I think he'll elevate the screen game out of the backfield. I think it means you may – I mean, maybe I'll stand alone with it. But Does the, that mean Jacobs or does that mean a New England Patriots 5,000 running back uh, roulette? Yeah, I mean, to be determined. This was an offense that was in the upper echelon in pass attempts, passing yards, um, total yards, so they moved the football, and that's why people like – Derek Carr or, or understand why Derek Carr is still considered to be a franchise quarterback. But I think somebody like Josh Jacobs could see better utilization. They couldn't functionally run the football. And that's something that Josh McDaniels has been able to do. And that's something outside the bounds of the everything comes with Tom Brady for his career. I mean, he has had success on offense last year. They were very good without sure. Tom Brady and no one expected them to be. So it does seem like he has confidence in Derek Carr. The way he's speaking about him, um, which he, he has no obligation to talk that way about Derek Carr. He could walk in the door and say, we'll see. And they could go find another quarterback, and I bet they'd listen the way that that organization puts it into the head coach's hands. Yeah, I, I think McDaniels wants Carr there. Carr's a good quarterback. Carr's not a great quarterback, but he is a, clearly a franchise quarterback. And compare that to all these other head coaches, right? All these, you know, we're talking about Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields and Teddy Bridgewater and Davis Mills, like, 
going into a team sure. with Derek I guess Carr, I'll take Carr. Uh, I think you've got two really experienced veteran NFL minds here, um, and I think he can. I think he can succeed here. They need another weapon um, now that they've lost Rugs and Brian Edwards is, you know, nothing. Um, but you've got a system that he has had for a long time that has you know been great for good slot players, and you've got one of the best slot machines in all of football so I, I think that this and, and Josh Jacobs can like Andy said catch passes out of the backfield McDaniels has had the opportunity to pretty much have the pick of his litter for a long time and there were um, you know many thoughts of well he must be in line for the Patriots that's why he pulled out of the right. Colts job but he chose this I think it's a good team I mean they were a 10 and 7 team and uh, I, I I think he's going to succeed here as best he can. I'm so, I'm sorry. Who, who said pick of his litter? That was Jason. So mm. I I just when I read it, I, I was like, letting it I was slide. Like, I, when I when I heard it, when Mike brought it up, I go, well, that's right, pick of the litter. And then yeah. I said, oh wait, pick of his litter. He's got a litter. They, they're and gonna was, get rid of all the other babies. Well, I was just imagining like yeah, Josh and McDaniels my, and like hybrid cat babies. Yeah, I know. Uh, listen. <laughs> Here's a question for you. Uh, better than butt gardening. Uh, here, here's a question I have for you, though. When I look at these opportunities to this point, would you rather be coming into the Denver situation where it seems like the peripherals outside of quarterback are pretty good or come into this Raider situation, which they did fight for a playoff spot? They made the playoffs. Right. Um, with an established quarterback, albeit not maybe, you know, depending on the opinion of, you know, upper echelon. Would you rather be the Raiders head coach in their situation or the Broncos? Assuming that you don't get Aaron Rodgers, I would much rather be the Raiders head okay. coach. The Miami Dolphins moved on from Brian Flores, and they brought in Mike McDaniel. And don't you dare say McDaniels. That's it's right. only one. There can be There's only one. There's not multiple. It's McDaniel. And they have uh, Frank Smith, offensive coordinator. This is a new... This is going to be a new offense. This is going to be something maybe for the first time really built around Tua. So do you have optimism in the Mike McDaniel hire? Coming over from San Francisco, obviously one of the younger head coaches. This was a 9-8 and eight team. Do you feel encouraged at the hope that maybe Tua – Maybe you can develop for fantasy. Yeah, I, I, I do. There's a lot of risk and fear when you hire a younger, more inexperienced guy. Uh, and, and he's not that inexperienced, but as far as like head coaching opportunities, um, his name hasn't been around for years. Uh, I tried to reach out to Juice to get the down low on him because I know I've, I've, I've seen Kyle Juszczyk talk about how brilliant this guy is, um, that, that he is going to succeed as a head coach. Um, he's inheriting what I think is a, is a pretty good team. Obviously, yeah. they went eight and one in the second half. Nobody thought Brian Flores should have been fired for the the job he did. The biggest issue I think that the Dolphins have is their terrible offensive line, um, and no running game. And these are kind of the specialties of Mike McDaniel and Frank Smith, the offensive coordinator that they've brought in. These guys have been running game coordinators for a long time, um, offensive line coaches to great success. So I think you're going to see the offense really turn around. And I, I am a believer, and I, I read a study a couple months ago. I, I, I can't remember where it was. Um, but it was talking about this, basically the opposite of what you said in the beginning, Andy. The success of offensive-minded head coaches is greater. Th like, that's the way you should really be hiring an offensive-minded head coach because when it hits is just far, far better for wins and losses. Interesting. Interesting. And it's – I mean, we – the the Shanahan system is often celebrated by fantasy football players because it's a great offense. I mean, and Kyle Shanahan's offenses have been you know pretty electric here for quite a while. And Mike McDaniel has been with Kyle Shanahan essentially forever. Uh, so the, I imagine that's what the the foundation of McDaniel apostrophe yes McDaniel's mm -hmm. possessive. Yes, thank you. Uh, his the offense. I would have corrected. I know yeah. <laughs> that's why I had to. I had to, I had to punt the brakes. Uh, but the offense that he's going to bring to Miami, the, the foundation will be a lot of the stuff that we've seen from Shanahan. So I, 
I expect that they will have offensive success. You, you noticed that I said it properly for Josh McDaniels is, is, is. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yes. Right. No, I, uh, I, I didn't correct you. <laughs> yeah, you got to fix the O-line if you want to execute on that offense, though, right? I mean, that's got to be a big piece of the puzzle. It is nice. If you want to make up for improving that line, right? You're not going to go from the worst in football probably to the best. But if you want to make up for it, it's nice to have a short area guy like Jalen Waddle. I think we're all encouraged by the the potential for him to take another fantasy step forward. Yeah, for sure. Which I mean, is wild to think about. Mike McDaniel and Kyle Shanahan are kind of notorious for specific game plans. They look at a a roster, they they you know a, a matchup, and they don't just run their system necessarily. You know, game in game out, this is who we are. They they try to exploit stuff. Um, and they build game plan. We've talked about that with like Debo. They build a game plan around a player on offense that they think can succeed. And I, I think Mike McDaniel's salivating at the chance to build game plans around Jalen Waddle, manufacture touches for your most talented offensive piece. So uh, like Debo, yeah. the The future is very bright for Waddle, and I think it's going to be a great spot for a running back to land. And I think they will indeed land a quality running back the gas man the gas man he's was running on, running good. low <laughs> running on empty yes the vikings eight and nine last year second in the nfc north 14th in points per game bringing in a mike zimmer replacement goodbye mike zimmer hello kevin o'connell mm. uh Oh, smell yeah, that? yeah, I smell it. Mm, I smell it. McVeigh. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I was wait, I was trying to figure out where you were going. You just wondered if I actually yeah. farted. <laughs> wait, no. are, we gonna, are we gonna do this on air? No, Jason? I wasn't you wondering. Do that again? That. Smell I was, your phone farts. I was not wondering that. If you in just the middle of a recording <laughs> just start <laughs> sniffing. Like, hey, you smell you guys smell that? <laughs> mm, popcorn. That would be a new level. A new low. <laughs> no, I was uh, speaking of the McVeigh cologne that has worked so well. For I thought maybe you were hired. smelling yeah. the bum. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> because the, Wes the Phillips is the new offensive coordinator, the grandson of Bum Phillips. Grandson of Bum. And it's interesting. He's on the offensive side of the ball. The, the you know, oh, uh, man. son of Bum. Uh, his father was <laughs> right. Wade Phillips, phenomenal defensive mind. Uh, but Wes Phillips, I think. I think Kyle liked that. That's he likes a good bum joke. <laughs> you know, there there is there is truly nepotism. You know, in all yeah. in all walks of life, there is certainly nepotism. But there's also. I'm Gen waiting for my son to get old enough to replace <laughs> Kyle. I'll tell but you right now. The, there's also generational knowledge, right? Like Kyle Shanahan. Yeah, you grow up in it. You're you're he, a four year old at practice with your dad. Yeah, exactly. And so I I do I am excited for Wes Phillips and what he can do being a third son generational. Of, son of. Yeah, son of son of bum. All right the uh, the Vikings they have. I mean, this is a good job. If Kirk Cousins is your quarterback and Dalvin Cook's your running back and yeah. Justin Jefferson's your wide receiver. And least, Adam Thielen's still there. As of right now, they're yeah, O'Connell at I believe at Indianapolis was talking up Kirk Cousins. He was the Washington offensive coordinator in twenty nineteen and then uh Rams offensive coordinator as he was acquiring the cologne for the last two years. So, Mike, do you have optimism about this this situation? I mean, it's a departure from the Vikings, you just knew that Mike Zimmer would fall back on the run at every moment. And it's not a bad thing to do when you have Dalvin Cook to kind of stabilize. Sure. But bad defense. You're not going to be able to, you know, over-depend on Cousins. At least we haven't historically seen that. Pressure. It, yeah, I, I think that it's assuming that O'Connell is going to, you know, take some of the things that he learned from McVay and bring that and implement that in Minnesota. Like it, you should expect – good things here business for, as usual for the weapons yeah you're not changing are you changing any opinions no i don't, I don't think i am i don't think i am fantasy wise i don't I, it's you can't really move these guys up right yeah and, that's that's part of the, so part of the you, issue you're not moving dalvin cook up because of this or justin jefferson up but you this, can feel safer with jefferson absolutely it, it, i am much more confident and uh, you know that, that they brought in an offensive mind uh, two of them. They're really a whole offensive staff here, which is a 
departure. You see this all the time in the NFL. Whatever the old coach was, they really try to swing the pendulum to the other side. Um, yeah, this is, this is I think, an exciting time for the Vikings offense. I'm in on it, uh, but I think we already were. We're just not afraid because, look, Daryl Bevel – was you know he's not the the best in the world as as a former Vikings uh, offensive coordinator in the past Kubiak yeah, well last year yes okay um New Orleans new head coach Dennis Allen who uh is replacing Sean Payton the Saints will feel very different when you get to watch them this year uh Pete Carmichael Jr has been with this roster for 14 years is now the offensive coordinator. He's the dude behind the dude yeah. that you've never heard <laughs> yes. of. Yes. I mean, 14 years in a row behind Sean Payton. Sean Payton calling the plays, getting the headlines. But, I mean, you're you're there essentially for the entire great run for the Saints and Drew Brees. You already know the defense was outstanding. And so there's a level of stability that comes with bringing De Dennis Allen in. Uh, they got the 18th overall pick. You know, what do they do at quarterback this year? Right. I assume they'll bring Jameis back. This is one of those hires that, like, I was ready to, you know, poo-poo on it where you you have Dennis Allen bringing his uh, sweet record as a head coach of 8-28 and 28 of uh, bringing that to New Orleans. But he's been there for a while, and the defense, is, the defense has improved, like, year over year over year with with Dennis Allen being there and to the point of you don't just you didn't just think of the New Orleans Saints as well it's just Drew Brees no it's Drew Brees and a great offense and they generally have a, a pretty dominant defense as well so I'm okay with the higher and I don't think that uh, it, like it's definitely not the Sean Payton and Drew Brees team but there's not gonna I don't think it'll be drastically different no I think it'll be very much the same yeah, I, I, I mean, obviously it's going to be a similar system because Dennis Allen and Pete Carmichael Jr. have been there forever. So right. it, it, they're going to try to do the same thing. But the way that I look at it is, you know, over the last several years, you've had Sean Payton, Dennis Allen, and Pete Carmichael. Now you just don't have Sean Payton. It's not an upgrade. You know what I mean? Like no, the, it's the, not. The staff there, I think, is 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 a downgrade. Um Pete Carmichael Jr. though looks like the happiest man alive. Oh, he's a very jolly. Like you remember when you were younger, if you ever had to meet like your girlfriend's dad. If I oh, was meeting yes. Pete Carmichael Jr. and I saw the face, I'd be like, Just "Oh, thank goodness!" So much better. You, thank goodness that dude is not beating you up. No, he he's not he's pulling out a gun nice. and wiping and trying to be all like. Ugh, no, he probably would make some dad jokes. Absolutely. Oh yeah, but oh yeah, I'm looking at this look guy how now. Friendly oh, rosy he looks. cheeks. I mean, yeah. he looks. This yes. this guy on Christmas morning. I know he's been there 14 years. I would want him in the building. Yes. On, on Christmas morning, like he's <sighs> he's Santa. Oh, absolutely. Like he's he's going though. He's congratulations. All, he's throwing Pete. it all out there. Um, <laughs> what a what a happy looking fella. Oh my goodness! 19th in points per game last year. 28th in total yards. Quarterback problems. They they did what they could. Andy. They did what they could, and but it's just it's just so you you said it before. When you hire head coaches, most of them fail. What was but, the? But when you see great head coaches fail or struggle on the offensive side of the ball, that are known as offensive geniuses. It's just who was the third stringer against the Dolphins? Ian Book. Yeah, I mean, come on, Ian Book is starting a fair enough. Part of his stats and they are still in went there. nine and eight. Yeah, and a lot of that is that defense. Yeah. So it can get a lot better on offense for this team. They could be a bounce back team. They really could. If they can fix, find some stability at quarterback, whether it's Winston or somebody else, this defense is going to be good enough to keep them in the divisional race. And they, are they the favorites? Yeah. I mean, the division is not, you know, getting any better with Tom Brady leaving Matt Ryan a year older. The, yeah. I mean, they've got a good defense. If they can bring Winston back, which right now they're making a lot of financial moves that appear to be making cap space to bring Jameis back. Um, yeah, they, they'll they'll be, I think, uh, a better team. When Pete Carmichael Jr.'s wife asks him to get like family photos, he's actually happy to do it. I still – that's maybe too far on the <laughs> joke. I think that there's nobody. There's, 
There's no one that actually likes that, right? As, as I have I, as I, the father of the family, do you call? Oh, I have been me. around Jason for twenty years. Yeah, I have rarely seen Jason frustrated in any circumstance, or, or disheveled, or kind of yeah. impatient. I don't. I know you clearly probably are behind closed doors sometimes because we all are. Yeah, I'm a human, but, but I did go one time to family pictures of you <laughs> because my wife used to do photography and mm -hmm. and um you were not as happy as pete carmichael jr appears to be i hate them so much <laughs> i hate everything about them other than the product like i i like having nice family pictures sure. afterwards i do not want to do anything to get them is yeah. it because of your face yeah oh, yeah mike, right. you know, mike is goodness. mike's in off season just blast mode <laughs> Goodness gracious! First thing, you're, you're fat. fat. <laughs> you're, you're fat. Last episode, that was not me. Yeah, and for, and and for clarity, that was also not directed towards me. Yeah, I, that was that was definitely J owl. Jason's doing work over here. That's right. Why? I don't know why you had to bring up your shaming of our incredible producer. Back, oh bring gosh. that back up again. Um, he just was, recovered. Somebody lasso good, this host over here. <laughs> the Giants. New head coach after a four and thirteen year. Joe Judge, see you later, Brian Dable. Welcome in. Offensive coordinator for the Bills the last three years. Uh well respected uh coordinator. Mike Kafka taking over. Was the quarterback coach, former quarterback. Uh he was a quarterback coach for Kansas City. Jason Garrett, see you later. I mean, just oh, saying no. Joe Judge, Jason Garrett, and that was the leadership last year. Upgrade. <laughs> yeah. There there's you can go up. You can't I, I go think, down. I think if they and I'm I don't have experience here, but I think if they brought us in, we would have been an upgrade. Oh, it to the, the three managers? of us. Yes. Absolutely. Who would be head coach? Who would be offensive coordinator? Who would Ooh. be defensive coordinator? I I'll take care of the I'll take care of the head coach. I'll, yeah, that makes yeah. makes sense. Mike's on defense. Am I? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I think you'd be good at it. You better be ready for zero blitz every single play. <laughs> Panda, go! All right. Are you, Jason? Would would you be a run oriented offensive coordinator or a pass pass? We heavy? would probably never hand the ball off. Okay, we would. <laughs> if we want to run, we would we would throw a screen. Zero blitz. Uh, no, it was a disaster last year for the Giants. I mean, this is a your your one free agent signing was fell on his face. Saquon Barkley, his future seems murky. Daniel Jones is is being talked about with some level of hope because they don't have a choice. Well, and that, that, that is their hope. Their hope is all in Daniel Jones. It's let's fix him. And Brian Dable, is, it's your best chance to do it. Agreed. He has, he being Daniel Jones, has shown enough flashes, enough tools. He's not a bad quarterback. He has not been good for the franchise. He has been injured a lot and hasn't had the weapon. So the hope is what you saw in Josh Allen those first couple of years being inaccurate, kind of raw tools flashes but not a good quarterback and Brian Dable being part of that process that really brought him to that next level I think that's exciting I totally understand this higher I think it's an upgrade but I worry a little bit about Brian Dable it, it's not like he was he just became an offensive coordinator and fixed Josh Allen here are his offensive yards ranking as an offensive coordinator from Cleveland Miami Kansas Buffalo he's been around his offensive yardage rankings were 32nd, 29th, 22nd, 24th, 30th, 24th, and then the last two years was superstar Josh Allen, second and fifth. Now, he was part of that. So hopefully he can play that role and make Daniel Jones special. But if we have to bet, you betting that Daniel Jones is going to be special? No, I took issue to you saying he's not a bad quarterback. So, <laughs> so, so I mean, <laughs> yeah, you're right. I would worry about it too. Personnel problems and uh, organizational issues, and I'm not saying anything. Giants fans don't know. I don't think Giants fans are going into the year with a, a great deal of hope. Yeah, but at least they feel like they don't have Joe Judge. Yeah, they're not, they're not dragging Judge and Jason Garrett behind them. I mean, the you know what the the worst move. I want to know, Kyle, I don't know if this is the kind of research you really want to do ever in your life, but the whole, like, was a head coach, long time, then fired, then gets kind of second pick-me-up job Jason Garrett situation, I don't think that can work. 
you know, Jason Garrett gets canned as head coach and then gets goes gets an I mean, Lovey Smith, I guess, defensive coordinator. <laughs> Mike McCarthy? Out. Well, a little bit TBD, but the, the Cowboys. Well, uh, I'm talking about when you dip down into like a coordinator, mm, right? Mike McCarthy oh, went straight over head coach. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. But I'm saying like Jason Garrett was left for dead and somebody wanted him. Yeah. And it, I, it was a one-year goodbye. And I think this will be – I think this has a, a terrible chance – uh, to be a two-year goodbye for for Brian Dable, at no fault of his own, because if Daniel Jones isn't the answer this year, they're going to be bad this year. And then what are they going to do? They're going to replace him with and a rookie, be bad the next and year. they're going to be bad the next year. And after two terrible years, you just move on. It's just a bad position to find yourself in. Um, and then he'll be a coordinator again. You, that's we should like write down the timestamp because you're probably telling the future. Offensive coordinator changes that were not head coach changes. The Bills, obviously replacing Brian Dable. Ken Dorsey um, was the quarterback coach and the passing game coordinator for the same team, right? So you get stability. I think you brought up, you know, Josh Allen talking highly of him. Shouldn't expect any big changes to that offense. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, <laughs> I thought you were moving on because we were all in agreement. No, no, I left yeah. kind of a, a pause there, like a, yeah. like a. I was just looking at the next team. Let, let me fill in your pause. Is their quarterback great? Yeah. Their offense will be fine. Yeah. The Carolina Panthers. Yeah, here we go. Is he, so, so hold on. This is the thing. This is what I'm talking about, here right? Here we go. Ben McAdoo. Oh, man. McAdoo, don't do this. McAdoo, don't do this. I mean, this. what? I don't like this guy. Oh, we, man. He, we all know what this is, fellas. This is a patsy. This is somebody to fire. <laughs> ben McAdoo has been hired to be fired at the end of the year. Which he's happy with. Just in case it doesn't work out for the Carolina Panthers and Matt Job. I do not think he was hired as a patsy. I think it was a bad hire based on swinging the pendulum. They had a guy with very little experience calling yeah, NFL they wanted, plays, and they wanted experience. And then all the experience went elsewhere, and they were left with Ben McAdoo, who has a long history of being bad. Really <laughs> poor play design Good luck. decisions. And um, and then they don't have a great quarterback. So uh, I, I don't think he's going to be able to be the Patsy much longer for Matt Rule. So during the coaching carousel show, we have learned one really important tr truth about coaching. Get a quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. This is a great coach. Great job, coach. <laughs> you hey, got a great quarterback. Hey, guess what? Here's another one. Anthony Lynn replaced as the offensive coordinator after one year in Detroit after being a head coach. Didn't work. Ben Johnson taking over was the, uh, the tight end coach in Detroit and the <laughs> offensive quality control. Oh, was the quality under? Was there enough quality there? I don't know. Why? Well, how Before much is, it went out there? How much can Ben bench? I don't know. Um, it's got to be a lot. He was the passing game coordinator over the second half of the year. We know it's golf, right? It, we, yeah, we do know it's golf. It's it's almost nice to see it transition from a running back focused coach. That's what Anthony Lynn was his entire career to a passing coordinator style of mindset that's what you want to see for the lions that's the only hope here packers and rams both have new offensive coordinators as well losing nathaniel hackett and kevin o'connell so adam stinovich and liam cohen yeah yeah it's okay they are the new coordinators who's their quarterback? <laughs> <laughs> well you've got good situations for both of those guys so they'll probably be wonderful coaches yeah, well, if Aaron Rodgers returns. Any fundamental changes that you see with those offenses? You know, no, Sean McVay is no. in control in Los Angeles. Aaron Rodgers in control in Green Bay. And and LaFleur. LaFleur yeah. calls the plays. So these are two offensive head coaches that I, I don't really – I mean, we, we, you know, we just brought up the 14 years of an offensive coordinator behind – uh, you know the a hall of fame offensive minded head coach you just whatever l replace how many how many offensive coordinators have been lost to the Sean McVay already you know it's like every right. year it's like who's Andy who's been near him dealt with that yeah, for a long time you're you're fine i i don't worry about that i want to be a i want to be an assistant coach for a great head coach because one day i will get the chance the Full free agency preview predictions are next week, but real quick, what do you want to see happen in free agency? Give me one prediction. Melvin Wait. Gordon to leave the Broncos. Uh, <laughs> go somewhere where you could be valuable, like Arizona. I think Arizona, if they don't bring back James Conner, he would be great for fantasy and then let Javante shine.
Mike? I, I want to see Dearness Johnson get an actual shot. I liked that. I saw that. Like, that dude, it's, I mean, a very, very small sample, but the fact that in those few games where he's had to be the guy, he has dominated. Like let this let this kid get a bag of money. I don't know. It reminds me of a Raheem Mostert type. Like he's been around and he was so willing to like just do whatever it takes to get a job, get on a roster, hard worker, and then he's shined on the field. I don't think that anybody's gonna view him as the signing to fix your backfield. And that's the problem with like I get it. It'd be neat. But do you think somebody's gonna give him the job? I don't know. I okay. it's just, it would be a great story. Go, and to, I, my, go it, to Miami. And I think it would work. Like I think Dearness Johnson is a excellent running back, and it would be a tremendous move for a just for a franchise because you wouldn't have to invest a first or a second round pick in this running back. You wouldn't have to give elite Todd Gurley money to this player, but you would get tremendous production from that position. I'll throw Mike Williams back to Los Angeles out there. I'd like to see All that right. happen, and then uh, why not put Allen Robinson on the Chiefs? Let's see if he's got anything left. The Chiefs think they're in the middle of the pack with some space. So. That, it honestly that makes sense. They gotta find a more reliable non Tyreek Hill Travis Kelsey option. Do uh -huh. they? Yes, they do. I think they do. I mean they've won a soup they've been pretty good with that. Yeah, but the the time for Travis Kelsey It's been the, years since they won a Super Bowl. Years. <laughs> That's true, two of them. Um I don't know. I, I think when you watch that offense and the stagnation it had at certain parts of the year, um, I'd love to just blame Clyde Edwards-Alaire for that, but it's not just that. I mean, when Sammy was there, I think they they were better. Do you think that Allen Robinson today is better than the Sammy Watkins that was on those Chiefs teams? Yes. No, maybe. Ish. Probably. Yeah. Perhaps. I don't know that he's better than Brian Pringle now. Okay, that's fair. It's once you pop. You don't stop. All right, that'll do it for today's show. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.